Hey guys, it's Becca from In A Book Show. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be discussing Poison Princess by Cressley Cole. This book has been out for such a long time and I don't know why it's taking me so long to read it. I actually hauled this book on my channel like a year ago. This book was weird, but in a good way. Very unique. Not like anything I've ever read before. I loved it. It was great. Five out of five stars. Very surprising, but very happy that I liked it. This book is about a girl named Evie. Evie is pretty different. She suffers from very gory hallucinations about the end of the world, kind of apocalyptic stuff. Evie is very surprised when these visions and hallucinations come true and the flash, which is pretty much the end of the world, happens. There is very few survivors in this apocalyptic era. Evie's pretty much all by herself. But then she teams up with this this guy and his name is Jack and it's pretty much them trying to survive this new world while trying to figure out what exactly happened and how they're going to survive this freaky world. Along the way they meet new people and Evie discovers special powers that she has. A group of teens have been chosen to reenact the ultimate battle between good and evil but it's not always clear who's on which side. I loved it. I loved it. I'm trying to make this spoiler free part really brief because anything I say will probably spoil you and I don't want that to happen. This book is so amazing. I loved it. I could not believe how much I loved it because I'm not one to watch or read apocalyptic things. There is these things and they're called bagmen in this book and they're pretty much like zombies and I don't like zombies. No, I don't like them. I don't watch the shows. I don't watch Walking Dead. I'm sorry, it freaks me out. I am so pumped to read the rest of this series. I've already got the second book. It came in the mail yesterday. Very happy about that. Thank you, Amazon Prime. I'm just so happy that I finally read it and I'm finally getting to this series. Make sure you go pick this book up so you can read it and then you can come back and we can discuss this book together. So that is it for the non-spoily section. So if you haven't read this book, go read the book and then come back. So we start off the book and it's really weird. I was... It was really weird. It's kind of like a prologue, but not a prologue because it's pretty much like the future. This Arthur guy and he's drugging her to tell her her stories and he's very twisted. And it was really weird because we didn't know the full story of that. Evie's hallucinations were really gory and gross and her mother sent her to a mental institution. Her visions were that bad. The fact that Evie had to go through that to go to a mental institution and pretty much they drilled into her like you do not think this way, don't think about what your grandma like taught you, you're pretty much a freak. She comes back and she has to pretend like she's not having these hallucinations. It was really sad she wanted to be normal so bad but she was definitely not not normal. So when Evie and Jack met, that part was just the best. She had dressed up in these this cute dress and she was so happy about the way she looked. And like her boyfriend was like, oh you look tired. Oh, that's not what you say to a girl. Jack pulls up with his motorcycle right next to their car and he's just literally staring at her butt. Pretty good first impression, Jack. I loved Jack. But then I also did not like him. I loved his French accent and the way that the author wrote it so you could kind of hear him talking like whenever he would say Padna or however he would say it, I would hear him say it. Jack and Evie's relationship for the first half of the book was really rocky. They were really mean to each other and it was really hard to read. Because Evie had these hallucinations when she was talking to Jack, he would be asking her something and she would be having these hallucinations. So whenever she would say something back, it was pretty much in reply to these voices in her head and the hallucinations that was going on. And whatever she say, it would sound like she was being stuck up towards him. And that's how their relationship got off to a rocky start. I feel like if she didn't have these hallucinations and he did come up and talk to her, then it would be different. I feel like, because they would have a normal conversation. So they would get together. Jack was definitely interested in her from the beginning of the book. It was really obvious because he could not take his eyes off of her. I also love how Evie could understand everything that he was saying in French. And I also love how the author, whenever we would say, have him say something in French, we would automatically know what he was saying because either Evie would say it or it would, 
you know, because she could understand it. I really like that aspect of it. One of the freaky parts is that she can hear these voices in her head, and one of the voices is Matthew, who we meet, and I loved. I loved Matthew. The way he would talk to her in her head before the flash, I don't understand, like, how he helped her in any way, because it was, like, riddles, and I just... Uh, I personally would not understand anything he was saying. That's why I would definitely not win in the Arcana games. I would just die like, in the first second. I'd be like, oh, I'm a part of this. And then there she goes. When the flash went down, Evie had just came back from Jack's house because he had stolen her journal with all her weird drawings from her dreams in it and everyone's cell phones. She was with her friend Mel. It was really sad to see her figure out that literally everyone that she knew, like her best friends, her boyfriend, were all dead. But I was really happy for her that she had her mom with her because that would have been even harder for her if she did not have at least one person. Pretty much after the flash, we flash forward a couple weeks. Her mother is sick because she got injured. There's pretty much no food because it's the end of the world and everyone's trying to stock up. Evie can grow food if she takes blood and puts it on the ground. She can grow food. Her powers were so cool. I loved Evie's powers. I loved how she and these plants had like a connection sort of. If she would be upset or angry over something, the plants the vines would curl around her, kind of like a comforting gesture. I can already tell that she's going to be very powerful. And then when Jack shows up, they're immediately rude to each other. They're like, oh yeah, you survived? That's great. I'm happy about that. Not really. Like, guys, come on. Like, the flash just happened. People are dying. People are dead. Can't we just be civil for one time? See, like, the thing I had about this book was that I liked Jack but he was so rude to her sometimes, like so rude to her and inconsiderate. I just did not like that. He explains to Evie that the militia is coming. He's explained to Evie, look, you can't stay here because this militia is wanting to take women. And it was just so frustrating because she didn't understand. She kept saying, I don't know if I should go. Like, what if they have doctors? I don't think you understand, Evie. If they capture you, then... They're not going to help you. They don't care if your mother is sick. They're immediately going to capture you. I don't understand how you don't understand that. When her mother mysteriously died before that her and Jack were going to leave, mark my words, Jack had something to do with that, okay? There is no way that her mother just died that conveniently the day before that they were going to leave. Evie tells Jack, I have to find my grandma. I honestly don't know if her grandma is alive or not. I'm assuming that she is. I hope that we find her soon and that she explains everything because we're kind of out of the loop a little bit. As soon as we met Selena, oh gosh, like I just did not like her at all. I didn't like her attitude towards Jack. Like she was nice to Evie, but she was like man hungry for Jack and I just didn't like that. And Jack was just like eating it all up. And this is the part, this is the part that I just did not like Jack because he was so inconsiderate of Evie. Really inconsiderate when he was pretty much calling her his girl and then the next second there's another girl he's with her and he's trying to make Evie jealous just not right I didn't enjoy that part at all another thing I hate how Selena and Jack all think that Evie is helpless throughout this whole entire book he picked on her about being helpless and so did Selena I just don't like that because girl power and I that's why I feel like she's going to be like one of the most powerful players in this game. The way that she handled Arthur in the end, I really don't think she's weak at all. That one part when Matthew and Evie get captured, Jack and Selena go and help them get out of this. We meet a new Arcana player and his name is Finn. Finn is the magician. He's kind of like illusions. I'm hoping he's gonna be that one funny character that when there's serious stuff going on, we always have that one character to just make everything funny and everything seem okay. We pretty much have that one moment with Jack and Evie where they're pretty much being lovey-dovey and he's telling her that he only was doing that with Selena to make her jealous and that he wants to protect her. And I could really sense that throughout the book that he was just trying to protect her. And he says he does not want to help her find her grandma because 
he doesn't want her to get hurt. I found this part to be really, really sweet and caring, but Evie tells him, you know, I have to find my grandma. Like, I have to. And it was pretty much her mother's dying wish. He says he's not gonna help her and that he is done. And then Evie sees Jack kissing Selena. I feel like because the way he was portrayed in this book kind of like a jerk, I could see him doing something like this. That's why I immediately was just on Evie's side, like, let's just get out of here. She is so heartbroken and so upset that she runs away, and that is when we meet Arthur. I am so glad that Evie kicked his butt after she's pretty much defeated him. We hear this voice and in her head, and we have heard about this dude. His name is Death. He has been popping up this whole entire book. First time we see him, and he's like calling out to her. Second time we see him, Matthew gives her this vision where Death pretty much kills this other person. Then we see him in her brain, and he's talking to her, and he's pretty much saying that he's coming for her. Who is this guy, and why is he after her? I need background information. I need to know how this start, why it's happening. I, you know what, I just need Evie's grandma just to write out an explanation for me because I just don't understand some of the stuff that's going on. All these kids are playing a game. Every single kid represents a card. They all have to kill each other. It's like the Hunger Games. Like that's what I kept thinking of it. It was like, oh, this is like the Hunger Games. After Evie kills Arthur, she comes out of the house, and this was my one of my favorite parts. Selena, Matthew, and Jack are there, and they're just pretty much staring at her because she's got all this blood on her, and the vines and all these plants are just circling around her, you know, just curling their vines all around her. She pretty much looks crazed at this point because she looks right at Jack, and she hears Death's voice in her head, and she just starts hysterically, psychotically laughing. <laughs> I thought this part was the best part. I absolutely love it whenever my characters go kind of crazy, but in a good way because when she, when she goes crazy, I feel like it makes her more powerful. Overall, I really thought this was a solid book. I loved it so much. I enjoyed it so much. Once I got through the first 10 chapters, I could not put this book down. So I am so excited to read the rest of this series. I can't wait to see how Evie develops with her powers. I hope she becomes so powerful, guys. Like, cause in the, in the first book, she's so weak, but I'm hoping by the end of the books that she's just so powerful. Those are my quick thoughts about this book. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below letting me know about your thoughts about this book. Also, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow all my social medias, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Bye!